Hello, Richard Knudsen here. It is November 10th, and I'm in Las Vegas, of all places, this week. And I just gave a presentation today at the Extreme 2010 ERM show here on the topic you see here, Taking Advantage of Web Resources. And this is the condensed version of it. So I will uh, linger but briefly on the About Me slide here. Uh, let me get right to the session overview. Here's what I talked about. Web resources are a pretty important new feature area, especially if you happen to be a, uh, a customizer, developer, dynamic CRM. What I did in this session was really just define web resources, provided a survey of the various types of web resources you can use, and go to a JavaScript uh, library example. Basically, one of the one of the big wins of web of uh, web resources in CRM 2011 is that you can easily create reusable libraries of JavaScript code so the same generic function can be used, say, to uh, format a phone number, for example, from any phone number in your dynamic CRM application. And in this little short version of the, of the session, I'm just going to do the first three pieces of this. I want to really show you just the, uh, the first piece, the Java. Uh, JavaScript library example. So that's what I'm going to focus in on. Web resources are defined pretty well in the SDK for Dynamic CRM 2011, which defines them as virtual files that are stored in the Dynamic CRM database. So they can be used to form customizations, sitemap, application ribbon. They work identical, that means the same, for Dynamic CRM online and on premise. And the different types of web resources you can have include HTML pages graphic images, JavaScript libraries, which is what I'm going to show you here. So when it comes to the piece of web resources that I'm going to show you here, namely creating reusable libraries of JavaScript functions, it's really a two-step process. Let me show you how you do this. Starting from the workplace, I navigate to settings. And this is Dynamic CRM 2011 beta online, by the way. Again, identical functionality, identical architecture in this regard for CRM online or CRM on-premise. And what I want to do here is use this customize the system link so that I can open up the all of the components of the default solution. But I'm going to click on web resources and I said it's a two-part process. The first thing that you'll need to do if you want to take advantage of JavaScript functions and forms is have a library of JavaScript functions that you can tap, tap into and you'll start the same way. Now I do have some existing ones here but let's just hypothetically suppose that I want to create a new JavaScript library. I'd start with a library of um, JavaScript functions on disk. So I'll use a disk file. This is definitely not option name. I'm going to do a quick example here just to show you the mechanics of how you bring in a disk file as a, a JavaScript library. So this is the schema name. Notice the schema name prefix here, new underscore. But here, this is important, I need to specify the type. So notice I've got lots of different types of web resources. Here I'm working with script. The important part is I need to browse out to a disk file. And I've got one here, this function placeholder. It's simply a text file with a JS extension. And I can go ahead and browse out, grab that, and as soon as I click Save, you'll see what happens. It's going to bring it in. Now this becomes a so-called web resource of this type. Notice you can't change this, the type of the web resource after it's created. And if I wanted to, I could navigate to it. We can navigate to web resources via their URL, but I can also click the text editor here and see that this is a real basic. This is the, uh, you know, the uh, CRM 2011 gripped web resource version of Hello World. So this doesn't do much, but let me just show you the mechanics of how you hook this up. So if I bring in this thing and publish it, it can now be used. So I'll save and close that. And I'll minimize that. And now what I'll do is I'll navigate to a, a record. It could be any record. Just uh, suppose I had some reason to put that on the lead record type. So in Dynamic CRM 2011 is one of my favorite small features. Instead of drilling down through customizations, I can simply click when I'm on any record type or entity, I click on the customize ribbon and I can immediately go to customize the form. 
That's a big time saver. So I open up the form customization environment. And what do I need to do to take advantage of a function library? Well, I go to form properties and I need to add that function library as one of the form libraries for the form. So if I click add here, and notice there's my new foo. In a minute I'll do something with a little bit more interesting function, but just to show you the mechanics of this, then what I can do once I've got a library selected now, I can add functions within the library as handlers for events on the form. So suppose for now I just want to do this on the form onload event, and I'll call, tap into my little hello function just to illustrate the mechanics of calling these things. Make it enabled, click OK, and now since the functions the function library is already published, all I need to do is do the preview, preview the form. We'll see the onload event will fire. The handler will pick it up, and we will see the little alert here. There's my hello from CRM 2011. So that's my trivial version. Now, let me show you something a little bit more interesting. Go into form properties for lead. And let's remove that one. And let's add a previously created function library, this new common functions, which is started out the same way as that trivial one did there as a disk file. But I'm going to go ahead and add this. Now, the functionality that's in here that I want to use is a function that formats phone numbers. It's the classic, uh, this is effectively the hello world of uh, reusable functions because it's uh, something you want to do over and over again. And there's, uh, generally speaking, you know, no difference between the way I want to format a phone number in one place compared to another. So I don't want it, in this case, on the form on load event. And in Dynamics CRM 2011, I can get to all of the fields on the form right from the form properties dialog. So here's where I want this one on the business phone. Let's pick a phone number field. And the on change event is going to handle this. And here's the handler. What I want to add here is my format phone number function. It would be nice if I could browse to that. Unfortunately, it's, it's not enabled yet. And in this case, I'm going to pass the execution context as the first parameter. Let me show you how this works. And then I'll explain why it's important to keep that bit in mind there. So I've now turned on the function library for this form. And for the business phone field on the lead form, added this format phone number function as the event handler. Now, let's go ahead and see if I got that right. So let's go to, so let's preview the form. Doesn't matter if I do this one in create or update. Scroll down here to business phone and something like that. Tab off, fire the change event. And you can see that the function is doing what it's written to do. It tells me, OK, the phone has to contain 10 numbers. And if I flush this out a little bit more, so I'll go ahead and put 10 digits in there. That's a real phone number. But you can see the phone number, format phone number function is doing what it's intended to do. Now, so, so that's how that works. Let's take a quick look at the function itself. Instead of going through form properties this time, let's drill down through the field itself. Two ways I can do this, CRM 2011, I can go to Form Properties and select the control, or I can do this the traditional way, simply go to the control, double click on it, and go to Events. So here's the format phone number event handler for the change event of this control. And this time, instead of editing the handler itself, let's edit the word and see what the function looks like. Here's my function format phone number function, and notice context is passed to this thing. That was what I ticked off in the event handler properties where I said that I wanted to pass the execution context as the first parameter. This is a brand new thing in CRM 2011 and without going into the code too much here I'll just mention that it's an important thing if you want to, it's actually the critically important thing here in this example that lets me write a function like this that's generic, can be reused any anywhere I've got a, a phone number field that needs to be formatted like this. So just remember the context is something, it's an object variable that I can basically use to figure out which 
field on the form fired this event. Which, is, which field is this the event handler for? So it gives me the ability to generically handle that. So now what that means is I can do that anywhere. I can add it to the mobile phone field, drill down through there. No reason this shouldn't have that. Let's go ahead and add it here. And enable it. We pass the execution context. Now when I'm ready, I can go ahead and publish this. I'll just save and close it for now and uh, publish it from here. So now this is effectively in production. And if I opened up one of these records, you'll see that that function is going to fire for any phone number I attach that event handler to. So here's my checking there. in and we see we have a nicely formatted phone number. Now that can also be done anywhere else. So let's go to contacts for example. Could be anywhere. Anywhere I've got a text field that I want to apply formatting like that to, I can easily customize it. The contacts, customize the form. So first let's click form properties on the contact form. And if I haven't added the function library to this form, I need to. So I click Add. Grab Common Functions. And let's take a shortcut and go to one of the form fields that I want to apply to. Let's say Business Phone. And Add Phone Number as the event handler for the change event here. And make sure we do this. If we don't do this, it won't work because there would be no execution context for that function to grab and figure out which event fired it. So we do that, and we can go ahead and preview. This phone, let's just make sure the event fires here, and that will, or the event handler, I should say, and that will illustrate the point. So you can see, boom, as soon as I tab off, phone must contain 10 numbers. So we know that works, and I could really apply that to any phone number anywhere in my dynamic CRM application without making any changes to the code. So that's how you can use web resources to do reusable JavaScript functions, in this case, for formatting a phone number. But obviously, there are innumerable examples of that. And I hope you found this helpful.